I'm Becky Mayer and welcome to Transition Body, Mind, Spirit. How do you do in a transition? I like to use the metaphor of triathlons. I do triathlons. I've been doing them for 11 years. I transition from one thing to another. It might be first you start to swim and then you get to your transition area and then you bike and then you get to the transition area and then you run. And that's a metaphor for life. I'm amazing guest tonight. Uh, in fact, they're so, their story is so amazing, we're doing two shows on them. So we have the first show, and then there'll be a second show. And imagine doing the Appalachian Trail. A lot of people have said, yeah, I'd like to hike the Appalachian Trail. It's 20, over 2,100 miles. You know, we ran into every walk of life out on the trail, from a five-year-old boy to a 72-year-old gentleman to, you mm. know, ladies and college students, um, just kind of all over the board. And this is a trail um, that is a footpath, a continuous footpath um, from Maine, or we went from Maine to Georgia, Georgia to Maine. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I think, like Sarah says, it's about 90% mental that you can, mm -hmm. if you can commit to it mm -hmm. and be flexible and be excited about you know, the things that come and just get out there and really commit yourself to doing it. I mean, anybody can do this trail. And if you're fortunate enough to do it, you know, I, I wouldn't hesitate. Go. Go and just do it. Go. Get it all together. Just do it. Go just and do, do it. it. And now, tell me, this is <laughs> a, the exact replica of what you wore on the Appalachian Trail for most of the six months. Am I correct? That is correct. That is correct. Um, I got my shorts. Uh, at the Goodwill, they're the, kind of the old school umbros. I knew that they would dry quickly because they were wet all the time um, with all the stream crossings that we were doing. And then my shirt I got from um, from Walmart. It's, I mean, just kind of a, it says it was a quick drive uh, material, but. It's not cotton. It's not cotton. Nothing, no, you would you not wear cotton. this. Nothing is cotton. Um, and then I've got my, I wore gaiters. The, these are the taller version of gaiters. Mm -hmm. A lot of people wore some that just went over the top of their shoe and they're called mm -hmm. Dirty Girl Gaiters. Dirty um, Girl Gaiters. Woo. Yeah, but I, I chose to stick with the tall ones, which were, no one was wearing those really on the trail. Um, Are you I, glad you had the tall yes, gaiters? Yes, I am. I am. Because I, why? Because I, I didn't have any tick bites um, the entire way. Okay. And, and they help us. Uh, <clears throat> they help your shoes last longer because it keeps all the the dirt and grime from getting in your shoe and breaking it down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and was it, it was there any irritation from that rubbing against you? No, I no? never had any irritation. Um, hmm. These things are fantastic though because it it saved me from losing a couple of shoes and some pretty thick mud suction situations. Oh wow! Um, or slipping off a bog bridge, which is just <laughs> a wooden piece of wood, pretty much a little small beam of wood that you walk across that got really wet and mm -hmm. so we were slipping and falling a lot but um, <laughs> but these help you know help me keep my stuff together and I really enjoy photography uh, that was one of the big things I was looking forward to on the trail was being able to take these amazing photos and so when I was doing the research for my camera I, I didn't want to have to keep it in a case because then you know if the bear walks by bear's not going to stop and wait for you right and fumbling yeah. with it and everything and so um, I went with one of the more rugged just point and shoot cameras it's waterproof so I didn't have to worry about it when it rained because it did a, a lot Nikon? it's a Nikon AW100 um, but what I did is because I wanted to have quick access to it and not right. put it in a hip pocket, I rigged up this thing on my backpack where this, this part right here is just a janitor's key chain holder. <laughs> and then uh, just with some carabiners and then I took a, a rubber band and put it around here so it wouldn't bounce around when I was when I was hiking or anything, but it was just, it was really easy just to be like, oh, there's a, a bear, you know, or something. And it was always right, yeah, it was always right here. And I didn't have to, if I dropped it, it wasn't gonna go too far. And That's it was- That's brilliant. Yeah, did I Did you come up with that idea yourself? I did, I was really proud of this one. Um, That's a brilliant idea yeah, because so, you go, oh, I, I dropped my camera, where is it? Yeah, oh. I never had to worry about losing my camera. I always had it right in hand's reach so it was That's fabulous and I got some really great pictures from it too so and I love the camera but yeah I was really proud of this idea wow and then why do you have a Halloween thing on the backpack <laughs> go ahead yeah I'll take that one um it's we got the orange in Pennsylvania because hunting season had started and so people we, we heard some 
some gunshots of you know people hunting in their farmland and wow. um, so we went ahead and got these from Bass Pro um, and um, and then my mom thought it would be really cute to make us into pumpkins so she mailed us these ah. felt um, pumpkin cutouts that we super glued on and we kept them on there and hiked with them from Pennsylvania all the way to the end. And nobody has mistaked you all for right. a deer. That's right, yes. That's right. We were, so I we was were really safe. glad to have our bright orange. Um, ah. It's really important for anybody who's on the trail yep. just because it crosses over into hunting season. Right, and I was gonna ask you, uh, as far as safety, did you feel pretty much safe almost most of the majority of the time? Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's probably more dangerous to walk out to your car from the mall at night than it is to be hiking wow. out the trail. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a small community and it's a very close-knit community, the hiking community is, and mm -hmm. you know, never once were we threatened by anything. Everybody was so friendly and supportive mm -hmm. and you know, random strangers running into them at the side of the road and mm -hmm. giving you, you know, juice and fresh fruit and, ah. you know, just just the amazing kindness of yeah. people along the trail the entire way. You know, wow. it's not just a southern hospitality thing. And even yeah. up in the north, mm -hmm. in the northeast, you know, the people were, were extremely friendly and kind. And, mm. and that was another reason I wanted to hike the trail is to, to be able to see that again. and, and you know, you watch the news and it's usually just bad stuff. And so right. I wanted to see some good stuff. And, yeah. and we met some some friends on the trail, people we, you know, never would have crossed paths with, but will now and forever be lifelong friends, you know, and yeah. wow. just really great people. Yeah. There's, and, a, I'm sorry, there's, a, there's something on the trail, it's called trail magic mm -hmm. um, that you'll experience. Um, if, you, if anyone decides to hike the trail, you, it happens all the time. And it's just where people will leave um, food or water on the side of the trail and you may or may not see them most often not um, it could be just anyone who offers up to you know do your laundry for you or wow. I mean if you come into town I mean that's a big one <laughs> but, um, but you know we we got to a point I remember we were in Pennsylvania and, and it started the trail started to get dry and we didn't have enough water and our water supplies, you know, our water mm -hmm. sources were drying up. And so um, we came across this big log and on the other side were just rows and rows of gallons of water. And it was like, that's yeah. perfect. I mean, it's absolutely, it's what it's called trail magic. So I just wanted to. Wow, yeah. let's kind of pass it forward. Yeah, you know? well, it's pretty popular, I feel like, on the trail this year. This is an Osprey Exos 58 and it weighs two pounds and seven ounces or something like that. So it's wow. it's really lightweight pack. Yeah. And um it's in there. Wow. And one thing that, that we did and, and most of these packs will have a sleeve on the inside to put your water bladder. Um, but we decided what worked better for us is we actually would keep our water bladder on the outside pocket here because it's easier to get to, it's, yeah. it's easier access than trying to shove this into your bag when it's full. So that was one thing, another thing that we we realized for us was easier to do. Mm -hmm. um, not everybody will enjoy that. This was my rain jacket. Um, I, I didn't start with this one, but I ended with this one. And um, really any, I mean, if you're out in the rain for eight or nine hours a day, it's it's you're just, still gonna get still wet. Still gonna get said? wet. Yeah, okay. and it's really hot, and you sweat, and so it's just kind of like a comfort to have if it's raining really, really hard. But otherwise, I don't know. You still yeah. get wet. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. still gonna get wet. <laughs> so I had Crocs for my oh. camp shoes. Um, there's always a debate when you come and talk to people about camp shoes. Um, mm -hmm. Most people either they love them or they hate them. Um, I loved mine. It was really important at the end of the day to take your feet out of your hiking shoes mm. and let them relax. And so having these to be able to walk around camp and not worry about stepping on twigs and pine mm. cones and stuff like that. And they were mm -hmm. really lightweight. So that was, we both had Crocs for our camp shoes. Yeah. This is a bag made by Sea to Summit, um, which they do a lot of kayaking mm. um, bags. I think that's more their um, forte, but they were excellent for us on the trail. It's a dry sack and compression sack. So whatever is inside um, definitely stayed dry and, and I at all costs had like an emergency set of uh, clothing that I would change into at the end of every day. So this 
this shirt was would be cold and wet and these shorts would be cold and wet. Hmm. So then when I got to camp, first order of business was putting on my um, my long underwear, which I also got um, from Patagonia. They're the Expedition Weight 4. And the main reason I wanted this was for the hood. And the it hood. fits really tight. Um, it's got a, it's the women's um, cut, so it's a longer tail in the back. Hmm. Um, it dries quicker, and then the pants as well um, have a larger waistband, and so it Look comes very up comfortable. in the back. It's very comfortable, ah. and like I said, they stay dry even you know if you got swept down a little creek or river or whatever. You knew that this stuff was still going to be dry, and it, at mm. the end of the, some of the days, it was it was my saving grace, honestly. Wow! Um, and then also my jacket. Um, now that seems very, very thin, that red jacket. Yeah, it, it's eight ounces. It's a Patagonia wow. eight hoodie. Ounces. Um, so I also wanted this for the hood um, piece. And it's the warmest. It's 800 fill down. It's the warmest jacket that I own um, outside of like a heavy, super heavy Carhartt or something like that. I mean, oh. and it's it's got a water repellent on the outside. So I still, I didn't. As, as often as I wanted to put it on <laughs> so badly in the morning, um, I wouldn't, and I would just leave it, you know, in my dry sack and then put it on at the end of the night. Ah. Yeah. So keeping things dry was extremely important when you're out there, and so mm -hmm. everything that we had was in one of these dry sacks, and so. <clears throat> there's a little bitty one. Yeah, there's a little bitty one. So this had our electronics in it, so we had a phone charger, a, a cell phone, extra batteries. Um, Batteries for like your headlamp. Headlamp and camera. Like so those types of things that you really wouldn't think about on the trail. I mean, we had our phone and we could charge it when we got to town, but we had some we had to have somewhere to keep them dry while we were on the trail. And so we had the little itty bitty bag for that. Um, that had a two liter bag that had all of our personal hygiene stuff in and Q tips. I actually carry Q tips. Q -tips. <laughs> yeah. Well, wow. most people luxury. wouldn't think about it, but I I wanted to buy some Q tips, and you can buy like 50 for two dollars, or you can buy 250 for two dollars. So I bought 250 Q tips in Maine, and I carried them, and they've made it almost all the way to Georgia. Wow. <laughs> so things like that, ibuprofen and stuff, that would stay in that bag, and then we also had those. The, the same type of bag, the dry sack um, oh. for our food bag. So we each had a an eight ounce or an eight liter bag that we would have our food in that we could hang up at night um, mm -hmm. with our bear bag rope. And if it rained, we wouldn't have to worry about, you know, eating soggy mm -hmm. tortillas in the morning and everything because everything, everything in our bag was in a dry sack. Wow. Regardless. And these two, this one kept the, the odors in. So you weren't going to, you know, call attention to the bear with your beef jerky ah. or Oh, right. or whatever yeah. else you had. Um, so that was really good. And speaking of food, um, got, um, and got this, which is also GSI, but it's just the cutest little teapot. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah, what's this made of? It's very light. It's titanium. Titanium? A picture. Wow. Picture. Interesting. That is great. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so all we were doing was boiling two cups of water and pouring it into into this bag. So the we, bag? Yeah. yeah. And then we sealed it up and we let we chose to let it sit for about 12 minutes. It only calls for eight or nine, but I really think 12 is the optimal <laughs> time frame. And, um, and then, I mean, 12 minutes later, it's ready to go. These are actually really good. And then um, we just folded up the bag. I mean, you just crush it down, yep. fold it up and put it in your trash bag. And uh -huh. you don't have any dishes to do. You just boil water in that, so you just dry it off. Wow. Less work. And these and there's a whole there's a whole slew of dehydrated meal um, mm. companies for backpacking and um, are some of these also tuna that's, salad? Yeah. That was that was the staple for lunch. A tuna salad packet. <sighs> okay. With some tortillas. I was see. typically a, a lunch for us. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I can eat these anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Too many. Yeah. <laughs> wow. But um, what else do we have in here? This is our, if you'll, you want to hold this for me? Uh -huh. This was, we always got the smaller fuel um, mm -hmm. canister. And um, I've had the same stove, camp stove, for about 11 years. Wow. Um, and we always kept it in this uh, bandana because mm. we found that that was uh, helpful. When you boil the water 
and then you pour it into that bag. That bag gets really hot, so we would just set it on oh, here. Oh, that's smart. Kind of like a little pot holder. Yeah. Um, but this is my camp set. This little. <laughs> this is it. <laughs> that's it. I have the uh, kind of a, an older version of the Pocket Rocket by MSR, and so um, you just it's got a little handle out here, and then you just screw it on to the top. Like so, and kind of get a good, good turn on there, so you know it's on there pretty good. And then um, we always had a lighter, yeah. And so we weren't like <laughs> not the Bunsen or burner anything. thing <laughs> like you do in chemistry class. So and then you turn on the fuel mm -hmm. and then hit it with the and lighter. Then the, and then the pot goes. Yep, it sat right on top. Look at that. Oh, um, so it, as far as water goes, what we decided, <clears throat> what we used was the uh, is a Sawyer gravity filter and so what we would do <coughs> is uh this bag here you can fill this bag up with with the dirty water mm -hmm. so before it's filtered and then um we would hook the hose in here this bring back strong memories yes. just doing yeah, that yeah this bag is nasty. filtering water was <laughs> was my responsibility typically um and then what we would do if you hold that for a second mm -hmm. <coughs> Because we were uh, tried to be as efficient as possible, mm -hmm. um, we really only wanted to filter water one time, and there's only one time two a day. Out, one time a day. Okay. And so we also oh. had a six liter bag, and so this was our clean bag. And we would, I would go fill this up as many times as I needed to, and then filter that into this bag, mm. and then carry the clean water back to camp. More often, find a, a limb somewhere that we could just loop this around and let it hang. And so the gravity would pull it through. And, yeah, and then fit ah. your through it. It was guaranteed for like a million gallons, million gallons. or something. Yeah. So wow. I don't yeah. think we reached that. But we really, we didn't see a lot of people with the, the water bag at night. They would go and, and filter water two or times at night. And then they'd get up in the morning and they'd have to filter water again. And, you know, I, I'd like to be efficient in things yes. that I do. And so this, I mean, it, yes, it weighs a little more, so people who are really weight conscious wouldn't think about bringing this, but for us, it just made it easier, you know, one time at night. And, and typically while I was filtering water, I was stretching because mm. I had the time to do it, so I wouldn't get too, too sore after hiking, you know, 16 miles a day. Yeah. Uh, but that's, that's what worked for us in our water system, and mm -hmm. we always, you know, we would leave this full, and then in the morning we would fill up our bladders with how much ever we needed. And mm -hmm. it worked out really well for us. I think that's pretty dirty. So while she was getting the water, yes. my job was to set up the tent and ah. our uh, sleeping situation, which um, we started out with um, the Neo Air, uh, Thermarest Neo Air, and um, they come in different sizes. Um, you can they have a really small one for I think it's I really think it may be eight or nine ounces and mm -hmm. um, this one was about 11 ounces so this is a full length and um, mm. and we would pump it up with <laughs> this was a luxury on the trail <laughs> another luxury item that we we use it's a it's bag that instead of having to sit there and blow up your your sleeping pad this is the thermos bag that is designed it's got a, a little um, plastic piece on the end that fits over the nozzle uh-huh and then so with that secure uh, seal right there. Mm -hmm. Hope you get a good one. And I know. Kind of put the air in the bag and and you can. Oh. This is a lot better than huffing and puffing. I mean, you're tired already. You're getting lightheaded. I never seen we anything had done it like before. that. We we have other sleeping pads, but yeah. So you do that I about know, three times and your sleeping and pad was going up. Wow. Yeah. And this also doubled, because one of the rules is you want things to typically double, you know, have two uses if right. you're going to carry it. Great laundry bag in town. There you go. That was, that was my reasoning for being able to carry that. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so it was my job to, to blow these up, get everything situated. We have, we had every, everything had its, had its place inside the tent. And, um, and then I put our sleeping bags out. Um, and so this is another dry compression sack by mm -hmm. Sea to Summit which um, one was for our clothes, and then we, we had another one for our sleeping bag. And that's not going to get wet? Nope. No nope. matter what? No matter what. Nope. There you go. I mean, you... it, it survived our experience, so that I know. Wow. <laughs> which, you know, we were swimming a couple of times. That's but um, this is my sleeping bag. 
That's it. It's in that little yeah, bitty thing. I, I saw smaller on the trail. Yeah. I have to be oh. honest. I did. I did. Um, so this is a, a women's um, mountain hardware. Um, I think it's the women's phantom mm -hmm. and it's a 32 degree bag. Mm -hmm. um, it's 800 fill goose down. So it's a mummy Ooh. bag. So you've got the hood that you can cinch down. It's really lightweight. It's actually a uh, pound wow. and some amazing. change, I think. Yeah. And then also inside, we, um, on the really cold nights, we had our silk liner, which I think is really important. Um, I tore mine all up at <laughs> tossing and turning. <laughs> uh, but you get inside this and it added another about 10 degrees um, wow. warmth to your whole setup. So mm -hmm. imagine this inside of this. And then I have on my long underwear with my hood and my so little red at, jacket. At night, you you guys were not cold at mm -hmm. night. Not typically. I mean, there were a few nights when it got bitterly Some cold outside. Some of them outside. hurt, but, um, <laughs> but <laughs> overall, I mean, we were pretty comfortable. We never changed out bags. Some people will start their hike with a, a, a lower rated bag because mm -hmm. the weather is going to be colder and then <clears throat> when summer starts, they'll send that home and they'll have somebody send them another bag. We didn't want to have to deal with that, you know, trying to send gear back and forth. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, so we, we really picked one kind of that, that we, we felt kept. would be comfortable, um, mm -hmm. you know, through. And that's why we added the silk liner, you know, in case it got too cold. Plus, we had our jackets if we needed another mm -hmm. layer of warmth. Mm -hmm. But typically, we slept pretty well. So the other thing that we it. had um, that we that worked for us, which was really gloves. well, gloves. And these aren't your typical gloves. These are actually kayaking gloves. Mm. Um, yeah, it's the Warmers brand. They're like a kind neoprene. Of a, yeah. And so, because what we realized pretty quickly was we're going to get wet. Gloves, mittens, they're going to get wet and your mm -hmm. hands are going to get cold. And so what these are is um, they'll get wet, but they keep your hands warm. Mm -hmm. And so we realized and we were very thankful that we had these, especially in Maine, because it was wet a lot and mm -hmm. it was cold. But to be able to still have, you know, feeling in your hands and they may get pruney because you're wearing gloves, but mm -hmm. they really did save. They saved some pain. Yeah, um, definitely in the long run. So wow. this was one thing that I was really excited that, yeah. that we had. And we kept them through, you know, throughout the whole adventure. And so, you know, we didn't use them um, when it was. I don't know, August, yeah. you know, <laughs> September, but pretty close thereafter, um, maybe only two months out of the, the whole six months. Mm -hmm. um, just thinking about the bug nets, I always kept mine in my hip pocket. I was always hiking in, in the front and um, because um, it was my job to take down all the um, spider webs that were crossing ah, the trail. Ah, so you, they hit you first. They yes. hit me right me here. Um, oh. Pretty much every time, so. Um, I would just wear this in the morning and what a great idea <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know they got hot and don't advise anyone to sneeze in here oh, or right. spit you know anything like that um, yeah. <laughs> but um, but these were great I highly recommend them especially um, we were lucky in that we didn't hit the black flies mm -hmm. um, mm. but I had one black fly bite and it was horrible <laughs> um, but most of the time the, it's a lot worse than that yeah. so um, just kind of for your sanity I, I recommend uh, getting a bug net mm -hmm. for the trail yeah. and um, and then you can just kind of go like this yeah, and it's more fashionable yes. that way yes <laughs> reach your uh -huh. neighbors and yeah. then I go and buy so wow that's what so. I know her mom likes to sew and really enjoys it and so she had asked her you know can we do some sort of like kind of ceremony at the end? Because hmm. it was a big deal. I mean, that's yeah, six pretty months. Big deal. It's a big deal. And so, you know, we thought we might get a patch, you know, or something. And one uh, patch. <laughs> my mom and her mom had gotten together and worked really hard on calling all these different places to get these hmm. different patches. Um, she even designed. She even designed um, this patch for us, so the Appalachian Trail Sobo 2013. Um, which is pretty special because South Bounders don't usually get recognized as often because uh, huh. it's not as the popular choice um, to go south. And so, you know, she had this design for us and made, and it was, you know, it was pretty wow. amazing. And there's there's stories behind every patch that we have. It has our trail name on there. I was Trooper. I was number two. It was great. So yeah. Anyways, um, so these vests. Um, a lot of work. She, they they both did a lot of work, um, and each of them have different patches on them, like. This one here, we went bowling. 
when we were on the Appalachian Trail. Ah. We did a lot of things yeah. that most people wouldn't do. Um, Got the Long Trail, a uh, trail that coincides with the AT in Vermont, Mount Washington and the White Mountains. Oh yeah, we uh, need a back going, going. shot here. So we've got Shenandoah National Park. Um, ben and Jerry's, what's that in there? There's a lot of free Ben and Jerry's on the Appalachian Trail. Wow. Really good places, um, Green Mountain House in um, Manchester City, Vermont. And then also for the uh, Half Gallon Challenge, which is in um, Pine Grove. Pine Grove Furnace. Pine Grove Furnace, I'm trying to remember everything. Yeah. And she, where she ate a half gallon of cherry ice cream Woo! in about 30 and lost four 20 minutes. 20 pounds. Yes, yes. Guilt free yes. eating, yeah. guilt free eating And we hiked great. seven miles after that. Yep. Wow. Um, there's just, you know, these are all just kind of memories. Fontana Dam, this is Epic T-Bone. That is her brother's trail name because he came and joined us on the trail oh. in the Smokies. And um, wow. his name is Eric, and I thought it would be funny to call him Epic. And then he was like, no, 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 I want to be called T-Bone. And we were like, your name is Epic T-Bone. Yeah. Wow. Epic T-Bone. And then so the trooper stuck. is? That is her trail name because um, her feet were absolutely destroyed when mm. we started hiking. Just the blisters and it was bad. And she never once complained about anything. What a trooper. That's right. Yes. So that's how she got it at putting the tent up. Um, pretty quickly. She would usually get get the tent out and I would put the poles together and it was funny we would joke um, several times that we were trying to get in a TV station because this is just one long pole. Oh my heavens. And so we would put it, we would get it together. Sarah was smart enough to color coordinate the ends with oh. the right end of the, the pole that's supposed to go in there. So um, you know, when it was raining really bad and it was just the pits, we had, we had to move quickly and we could. Um, I'm going to go like this. That is one pole? Yep. It's that all one piece. That is amazing. We might be a little rusty now because we haven't. <laughs> You're not as fast <laughs> as you used yeah. to, but it's only for like six so months. Fast, but <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. So by the color coordinating, which is a really great idea, you can put this thing together up pretty quickly. And if you got two people doing it, it goes really wow. fast, really great. Wow, I'm impressed already. Look at this. So this comes together. Wow. <laughs> Did it upside down. I got it. <laughs> so oh, that that is larger than you'd think of a, as oh, a two-person. Oh, people called it the Taj Mahal. <laughs> we got <laughs> made fun of. It was a lot of fun. Sarah and Margie have given us the best, amazing tour of the Appalachian Trail. What a transition, and what great adventure. Aren't you inspired? Well, thank you for transition, body, mind, spirit. I'm Becky Mayer. Have a good evening. Thanks.